Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Look us up on Roku in the sports section. We're there, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. On iTunes, one word, Dwyer Boxing News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, for legal reasons, because this video is going to be pushing the envelope a bit, let me just say that this video is my opinion. I'm not making allegations of corruption or competence. I'm just pointing out scorecards here so that gamblers looking at fights who are also watching the identity of the judges can reach their own conclusions about whether or not betting on a particular fight is worth it. Now, let me say this. A fight that bothered me a great deal at the time. Jesse Vargas versus Khabib Alekverdiev. Right? went to Jesse Vargas. Vargas took Alec Verdeo's title. What I want people to do is I want people to look not only at the CompuBox numbers but at the tape of that fight. I want you to ask yourself whether Alec Verdeo should have lost his title that night. Whether the scoring in that fight was plausible. Then what I want people to do is to look at Robert Hoyle's scorecard. That's the name. Robert Hoyle. Right? Compare and contrast his scorecard that night. He had the widest scorecard that night. He had Jesse Vargas winning that fight by six rounds. Now based on what you know about boxing based on your own views on what happened in the ring that night even if you had Vargas winning the fight right and the other two judges had Vargas winning the fight 115 113 but I want you to look at the fight and to ask yourself whether you believe the fight credibly could be scored with a six-round advantage for Jesse Vargas. Right? Is the scoring realistic in your eyes? Because if you find a judge who's dealing by metrics you don't know about or who is interpreting events in a way that doesn't conform with your understanding of the sport, then you need to be careful, right? You can't rely on what you would consider to be proper scoring in a fight. So let me just say, it's Robert Hoyle's scorecard for the Jesse vargas Khabib Alekverdiev fight. Understand Alekverdiev loses his title. What I want you to do is to look at the fight and the CompuBox numbers. Now let's look at this fight where Robert Oyl was a judge and that's the fight this weekend between then champion Miguel Vasquez and understand Vasquez had had seven title defenses right this was a long-standing proven champion against Mickey Bay Right now, let me just talk for a moment about the CompuBox numbers. Understand, Bay is the challenger. Let me tell you, there used to be, who knows if it still exists, but there used to be a saying in boxing that you had to beat the champ to take his title. Right? It's official policy for the sanctioning bodies in boxing. That if a champion fights you and the fight's a draw, the champ keeps his title. Right? More importantly, 
these photo finish rounds. And keep in mind, a judge can score around 10-10. The idea was that you had to win the round to get credit for the round against the champ. If the round's really a draw, if the round's too close to call, right, the judge is not supposed to give it to the challenger. There's no bias for the challenger. Okay, now understand that. The burden really is on the challenger to take the title. Right? Now just understand, forget my opinion. Let's throw that out the window. Just understand that according to CompuBox, Mickey Bay landed a total of four punches in three different rounds. Remember that. This is a 12 round fight. Let's just do the math. According to CompuBox, a third party, Mickey Bay lands four punches, less than a handful. He lands four punches in three different rounds. Right? Four. In another round, he lands five punches. Right? Five. So just in terms of one hand or less, the fingers on one hand, Mickey Bay lands five or less punches in four rounds. Four. He lands six punches in two more rounds. Right? So understand, folks, that's half the fight in which Mickey Bay, the challenger, is landing six punches or less. Right? Six punches or less for half the fight. Right? And for a quarter of the fight, Mickey Bay is landing four punches. Now, would it surprise you to learn that given the six rounds, six, in which Mickey Bay lands six punches or less, right, in a fight that Steve Bunce of Box Nation had Miguel Vasquez winning, right, in a fight where Steve Farhood of Showtime at the end of six rounds as Miguel Vasquez winning four of the six rounds right and that's only halfway through the fight he has it 58 56 right he doesn't give an end of the fight scorecard but he has Vasquez winning four of the first six rounds understand that Robert Hoyle had Mickey Bay winning this fight 119 to 109. He has Mickey Bay winning this fight by a 10 round margin in a 12 round fight. Think about it. For that to hold in these 12 rounds. He would have had Miguel Vasquez, the champ, the seven defense champ. He would have had Miguel Vasquez winning one round to 11 for Mickey Bay. Let's be blunt here and let's do something the mainstream media has it and I'm encouraging YouTube Nation to make some noise. Let's have an investigation of Robert Hoyle's scorecard. Right? We've had investigations following the Manny Pacquiao Timothy Bradley match to the IBF. Your title was at stake. No other judge had this fight by a wider than 115 113 margin. Right? Is a scorecard 
that has Mickey Bay winning the fight by 10 rounds. Credible. This needs to be investigated. In my opinion, it debases the fight. The scorecard is so ridiculous. It is so preposterous, in my opinion, that when you compare and contrast it to the copy box numbers, in my opinion, it's completely discredited. Understand, according to CompuBox, the champion, Miguel Vasquez, lands more punches, lands more power punches, and does so at a higher percentage. It's an outrage. Let me just call out some rounds, too. Now, I'll agree. Mickey Bay closes the show strongly. I would not have a problem with Mickey Bay winning this fight in a photo finish. Bay seems to solve the puzzle and does well in the last quarter of the fight. But just understand, right? There is no way, in my opinion, none that Mickey Bay wins the first round, the second round, or the fifth round. The reason that's important is that's three times the number of rounds that Robert Hoyle gives Vasquez for the entire fight. Right? What I believe boxing needs to do is what the leagues do. They need to look at referees, look at umpires, and really understand that the credibility of the sport rests on them. If we the fans are watching judges put together scorecards like this joke joke of a scorecard, 119 to 109, in a fight where you know, credible people, Steve Bunce, Box Nation, believes Vasquez won. I believe Vasquez won. I have to be honest with you, though. I also believe Khalid Alaverdiev won. Look at my post-fight video for that fight from months ago. Right? Steve Farhood, at the halfway point of this fight, Showtime score, has Miguel Vasquez winning four times the number of rounds. Four times the number of rounds that Robert Hoyle has him winning after 12 rounds. This fight's a joke. This scoring has undercut a fight that was highly competitive. How could anyone view Mickey Bay as a credible lightweight champion when the scoring has really robbed us of an objective view of whether he really won the title. Maybe Robert Oyle objectively feels that the fight was a 10 round margin. Right? Maybe he does. Right? I'm not here saying otherwise. But what I am saying is maybe his views aren't mainstream views. Right? Maybe his viewpoint isn't the viewpoint 99% of the public would have. To those of you watching this video, how many of you had Miguel Vasquez only winning one round in this fight? How many of you had a 10-point margin in this fight? This scorecard, in my opinion, is as ridiculous as the scorecard in the Paul Williams, Sergio Martinez first fight, the judge who gave Paul Williams that fight by a wide margin, was ridiculous. I believe Robert Hoyle's scorecard here is ridiculous. Let's just say going forward, I'm going to have to find a way to look out for this guy. Because, and this is just my opinion, I don't trust his judgment. 
right? I would have had no problem, even though I had Vasquez defending his title, right? I would have had no problem with Mickey Bay winning the fight 115-113. I would have had no problem with this fight being called a draw. But a 119 to 109 scorecard, that's an outrage. I mean, that scorecard upset me so much that I just couldn't get it out of my head the rest of the night. Right? I was watching the Floyd Mayweather fight, and we'll deal with that in another video. And I just kept thinking, man, you know, even as Floyd dominated Marcus Maidana, I was thinking, man, I wonder if that judge from that Miguel Vasquez fight scoring here, because if he is, who knows? Right? Maybe he'll have Maidana winning this fight by 10 rounds. That's how ridiculous the scoring was. Right, so let me say this. Unless we want Vegas to become a banana republic where locally promoted fighters are getting wide decisions and fights where no other judge has any fighter winning by more than two rounds, right, then we need to police the judges. Right, let's call out Robert Hoyle. Let's just say I question his judgment. In my opinion, there is no way that a reasonable person can look at the film of this Miguel Vasquez, Mickey Bay fight. A fight in which Mickey Bay again lands four punches in three rounds. He lands five punches in one round. He lands six punches in two rounds, right? That's half the fight of six punches or less. Let me point out, too, the other half of the fight, I believe Mickey Bay hits double digits once in any round over the 12. I don't know how anyone can watch this film and feel that it's a 10-round margin. IBF, step up. Police your crowd. It should not ever change hands this way. YouTube Nation, let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.